This is Business Week Armenia, CivilNet's weekly economic digest. Here's what you need to know this week. Armenia's monetary authorities this week cut interest rates by 25 basis points to 8.25% as inflation in the country continues to remain well below target levels and the economy continues to grow. In the first quarter of 2024, 12-month inflation continued to decrease, ending in March at negative 1.2%. 12-month core inflation also continued to decrease, ending the month at negative 0.7%, the central bank said in an explanatory note. Therefore, the board finds that a lower policy rate is necessary to achieve the objective of 4% inflation and price stability over the medium term, it added. In recent months, Armenia's economy has continued to expand substantially after growing by 8.7% last year and 12.6% the year prior, according to official figures. Last quarter, Armenia's Economic Activity Index, a measure closely corresponding to GDP growth, increased by 14.3% year-on-year. That has largely been fueled by massive inflows of capital and labor from Russia in a vibrant re-export business. Trade between Yerevan and Moscow topped $7 billion last year, an all-time record. This marks Armenia's eighth rate cut since last summer. Prior to that, the central bank had not lowered rates for more than two years. The Armenian government this week formally approved a proposal to establish a World Trade Center in Yerevan, tapping a local real estate developer to take on the more than $200 million project. In a statement, Armenia's economy ministry confirmed it had inked a deal with the real estate developer Renshin, allowing the company to take over the landmark High Post building and the areas around it in downtown Yerevan. Under the deal, Renshin will take a 50% stake in the project, while the Armenian government and High Post, Armenia's national postal operator, will split the other 50%. The plan envisages the construction of conference and exhibition halls, a business center, startup incubator, and hotel, all at an estimated cost of about $212 million. When first floated earlier last year, the proposal was warmly welcomed by Prime Minister Nicole Pashinyan, who said at the time, In my estimation and opinion, no complex of this scale has been built in Armenia since independence from the Soviet Union more than three decades ago. And of course, an investment of this scale is also a serious signal about the existence of a suitable investment environment in Armenia, Pashinyan added. When complete, World Trade Center Yerevan will join a network of more than 300 such centers around the world, all overseen by the World Trade Centers Association in New York City. Yerevan will be the third city in the South Caucasus region to host a center after the Georgian cities of Tbilisi and Batumi. The World Trade Centers Association says the center will expand Armenia's participation in world trade and investments and promote international business relationships in Armenia and expects the complex to open at the beginning of 2027. An electronic seller has dethroned Russia's state-run energy multinational and Armenia's largest mine as the country's top taxpayer. In what observers say is the latest sign that re-export to the Russian market remains a key driver of Armenia's ongoing economic boom. Mobile Center, Armenia's largest seller of mobile phones, tablets, televisions, and other electronics, paid nearly $52 million in taxes in the first quarter of the year, almost four times more than it did in the same three-month period last year. That's according to new figures out this week from Armenia's tax authorities. Observers say that is likely due to the re-export of imported electronics from Armenia to Russia, the world's most sanctioned country. After the start of the war in Ukraine two years ago, the United States specifically named Armenia as one of several transshipment points used by Russia to evade sanctions. Gazprom Armenia, the local subsidiary of the Russian energy giant, took the number two spot on the quarterly top taxpayers list, having paid about $47 million, while the Zangazur Copper Molybdenum Combine, Armenia's largest mine and one of the world's top molybdenum producers, came in third at about $40.5 million. Overall, Armenia's 1,000 top taxpayers poured just over $1 billion into the country's state coffers last quarter, representing a year-on-year -year increase of about 1.6%. That means just the country's 1,000 biggest companies paid more than three-fourths of all taxes collected so far this year. While firms involved in mining, energy, and tobacco production have historically dominated Armenia's top taxpayers list, recent years have seen a surge in the number of banks and consumer goods companies included as well. Observers say that reflects those sectors' increased profits amid Armenia's soaring re-export trade with Russia. And as always, please follow CivilNet for the latest news and independent reporting from our contributors on the ground here in Armenia.